And now joining us once again on the show, congressional candidate for Ohio's third district, Morgan Harper. Welcome back to the Damage Report. Thanks for having me, good to be back. Uh, glad to have you on. It's been a little bit since we touched base uh, with your candidacy and uh, things are moving fast. There's actually going to be a debate uh, in the very near future. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we're now 48 days out from election day on March 17th. We're having our first candidate forum this Sunday, 1.30 PM. We have people that are reaching out to us like, oh, what's the live stream gonna be? So we're <laughs> really excited. It's a chance to just continue to spread our message throughout the third district that we deserve to have a community where everyone has a home, healthcare. We're doing something about the climate and I couldn't be more excited to get in front of more people here. So um, tell me a little bit about what having this, not just having a debate, but having a debate um, with the Democratic incumbent. Uh, this is Joyce Beatty. Like uh, as outsiders in the media, we often look at when uh, debates are turned down by incumbents, we get frustrated about it because it seems like political cowardice. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly having a debate is an opportunity for the challengers. For you at this point in your candidacy, what are some of the things you're hoping to accomplish with a debate? Why is that sort of not just um, you know like appearing before people, but specifically with the Democratic incumbent, why is that important? Well, one, it's a huge deal. I mean, when I first started this, we talked about it when I've been on before, You know, people didn't think we would get any traction. So even the fact that this is happening is a demonstration of how much people are hungry for a change in the status quo because they know it is not serving us. And we have built a grassroots groundswell that has put pressure on this whole event even happening, right? Um, so that's just a, a proof of concept in terms of grassroots campaigns. But also it's an opportunity for people who have been living in a gerrymandered district, which means it's safely democratic and there hasn't been any competition for eight years to actually have something to talk about, right? To have some choice here and it's democracy at work, primaries matter, that people even know that they have a primary on March 17th is a huge deal. And then finally, it's a chance to present a real distinction for people where, you know, to date we, my opponent and I have both been appearing in public, but never together. So maybe you catch one of those conversations, maybe you happen to see me online or whatever, but to have a side by side comparison in terms of the visions that we're talking about of what's possible at the federal government is really gonna be impactful for people and it hasn't happened in a long time and folks are hungry for it. So obviously, as you just said, you're gonna lay out competing visions. Obviously, you're gonna talk about your platform, how it defers. Um, in this sort of situation where you've got a Democratic incumbent, apparently the uh, Franklin County Democratic Party is, there, there, there's plans to endorse Beatty after the debate or well, actually that's before the- actually before debate. Oh, it did, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, uh, okay. Happened. Well, then maybe that changes the calculation, but I'm curious, how aggressive do you go then? How much of this is just about presenting yourself to the voters and how much is presenting who you think Beatty is to the voters? Well, throughout the entire campaign, I've been focused on introducing myself to the community, You know, number one. Uh, in terms of why I'm doing this, because that's usually the question, especially in these primaries with uh, against a Democratic incumbent. Why are you doing this instead of going against a Republican, right? And and we've made the case over the past seven, eight months that not all Democrats are created equal. We have the ability to really be a national champion on a lot of the issues that are the issues of our time across the country that are facing our community, um, like climate, you know, backing things like the Green New Deal. And, and we deserve to have a choice here and I'm presenting that. And so um, that's, that's what I'm you know, really looking forward to and I'm what I think is gonna be important to make the, the case to make on Sunday at the candidate forum and the debate. I wanna ask you just one more question about that endorsement because our producers found that the husband of Representative Beatty is a member of the endorsement committee. It seems like you might be biased towards your partner. No, granted she is the incumbent, but what's interesting is that back in 2012, there was a competitive primary in the same district and they did not preemptively endorse. Do you think it's appropriate for them to be endorsing not only during the primary, but before the first debate, the first chance to really see the competing visions of the two candidates? No, I think it's completely inappropriate. I mean, that's why I actually said that I wasn't going to participate in the screening process, that there shouldn't be any endorsement. We have here two credible candidates. We outraised my opponent from a fundraising perspective in the first quarter. We have a lot of buy-in from students, uh, people living throughout the third district who are really excited about our campaign. And the party shouldn't be choosing sides before, as you said, we've even had one debate for people to compare what we're talking about and what decisions they could be making in this race. And so. 
you know, the fact that they endorsed last week, that the state party endorsed the week before without any conversation between the two of us, um, the incumbent and myself, and a chance for voters to hear from us directly is really disappointing. And it's also part of the problem. It's part of the reason why we are have, you know, such a, a high percentage of the electorate that doesn't even participate in these types of races and why people don't believe in politics. And our race is a testament that people want to believe, but it's got to be authentic politicians that are coming from a place of not trying to get rich, but trying to actually serve the public. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.